Okay, so we've got a very basic 2IO scene here. I've got one object that I can move around. I just did a play here, I can move this object around. I can uh, scale it and rotate it if I want to. Um, that's your basic 2IO scene. Let's have a look here and see how this is working. This is with the Uni 2IO scripts that, uh, that have been created here. <clears throat> um, our first object we're going to have a look at is called the scene manager. The scene manager's job is to basically keep track of well, the scene manager game object contains a bunch of scripts. Um, one of the scripts is the scene manager script, and that script's job is to keep track of the event manager. Uh, it seems a little complicated, but basically we can only ever have one event manager. And once that event manager is created once, it makes an actual socket, socket connection to the 2IO stream. And if we get rid of it, then that socket connection gets lost, and then reconnecting is problematic at best. So what we do is we have a, the scene manager script keeps track of the event manager objects. And if you switch scenes, you need to have a scene manager script. Um, and what it does is it looks to see if there's any scene manager event manager objects in the scene already. And if there are, it doesn't do anything. Um, what that does is it makes sure that we always have one, only one event manager script. And once it's hooked up once, we never lose it. This allows us to keep a constant 2IO stream coming into Unity. So what exactly is our touch event manager doing, really? Um, basically, what the touch event manager does is, as I said earlier, it connects to the 2IO stream and parses out the 2IO um, inputs. And the 2IO input basically is just a cursor input. It's what we're looking for mostly, um, for multi touch stuff. And the cursor is just a position on screen. So what it does is it takes the position on screen that's in 2IO coordinates and converts it to, like, Unity screen coordinates. So if I hit play here, we can see this happening. I've got this little cursor here. And this is my touch on the screen, it's getting converted. The other thing the touch event manager does is it ray casts through the scene from this point. So currently I'm not above anything, so I'm not hitting anything. Um, if, I, if, I, if I click above the cube, I'm getting a ray cast through the, the cube. It sees the cube, sees the collider, figures out that it's in the touchable layer, and then we can move it around and manipulate it as a touchable object. So let's have a look at that really quick. Our cube. Um, has to have a couple things to be to be touchable. Um, has to be in the touchable objects layer. There's a special layer called touchable objects. Um, if you don't have it, um, you need to add it, or things don't work right. <clears throat> and then any objects you want to be touchable have to be in that layer. This keeps your raycasting down to a minimum. If you have got lots and lots of objects, it's good just to have our touchable ones in the touchable layer. The other thing any objects need to have is they need to have a touchable script attached to them. Um, the script that's included here is the basic touch manipulation script, and that gives you the sort of the standards, drag, scale, rotate, which allows you to, you know, drag, scale, and rotate. So, um, pretty standard stuff. Make this a little smaller. Um, the other nice thing about the touch event manager, at least for testing, is it allows you to use the mouse to test with. A uh, single left click gives you a single touch. Command left click gives you a double touch. Command option left click gives you a triple touch. That way you can test your scripts um, easily and quickly in the editor. Um, okay, let's have a quick look at how the touchable object is working. We open up our touchable object script here. Um, this is the object that's being um, handed, handed events. There's things called touch events, and they're basically just a bunch of information about what's happening with the 2IO stream for that particular cursor. And if your object is getting raycast, it gets hit, it gets sent that touch event. Um, and it can, currently it can handle triple, single, double, and triple, so I've set up for here, or anything anything more than three because it comes a triple touch. So if you have five events hitting one object, it'll be called a triple touch, and you can just handle it um, however you like. So basically, the touchable, BB touchable object basically just defines the interface for the event manager to basically hand out events to objects. Um, Handle triple touch, handle double touch, handle single touch. These are just sort of, you know, defines the interface for that. Now, the this is sort of an abstract class. You probably wouldn't want to actually attach this class to anything because it doesn't do anything really. The sort of uh, real class, real version of this class is the basic touch manipulation class. Now, this is a child of the touchable object class, and this is what does the actual dragging. So here's, for instance, the handle single touch method. Um, we're going to lock the to get our Z value, we can lock the Z value if you want to. Um, that makes it sometimes easier since you're dealing with 2D stuff, or dealing with 2D screen with 3D world. Um, I've put the ability to lock the Z value in so it doesn't things don't fly away from you. 
Um, so basically all this does is just sort of like figures out the positions in the right points and moves things around. Um, very simple. Similar with handle double touch. Um, it finds the two touches that are touching, figures out how far apart they are, what the angles are, and then adds the scale and rotation. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so yeah, so that, that allows us to have the basic touch manipulation of this object. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, the last thing let's talk about here today is our status text. This is just a little script that basically calls out to the touch event manager and says, hey, tell me what's going on. So when you're testing, you can sort of see, oh, I'm connected. I've got 45 frames per second at the moment. You know, I've got all this packet count 10, packet error count zero, all that sort of thing. So that's kind of handy to do if you're testing with your table and you want to figure out if things are working right. Um, you can pop that up there and make sure you're connected and it's working. everything's working okay. Um, great. Uh, one last thing I lied to you is this cursor. This cursor is being drawn by a sort of a secondary scene management object called a crosshair controller. Um, and this is sort of a special case of the touchable objects. <clears throat> and it's actually, uh, the touch event manager looks for it specifically and hands it every single event that it gets. And all it does is it grabs a bunch of prefabs and creates them and puts them underneath your, your touch event positions. It's pretty straightforward. So whenever you have a touch event, it creates prefab six of there. You might have two or three. It only ever creates enough, like, you know, if you've only ever had three events, you only ever have three cursor objects. So you don't have to worry about having thousands of objects. It reuses them nicely. And there you go.